So I'm excited today because I have an idea for a brand new series with the Cessna 140 aircraft. When it comes to kind of the restoration series, I'm still doing modifications. There's still things I'm adding to it. Plus, I'm still planning on sharing some of the annuals like I've done previously or just, you know, repairs that I do the aircraft upgrades. But I have been trying to think about what I wanted to do next as a series of all the things that I get asked when it comes to aircraft maintenance. Preventative maintenance is the number one topic that seems to come up. What can they legally do on the aircraft? Is there a certain restriction or requirement for certain types of maintenance? And it's all very clearly laid out in the regulations. Oftentimes this is because these individuals, they, they want to save money. I mean, shop rates today are through the roof, sometimes as much as 75 or $80 an hour for just the AMP, much less the other things like consumables and parts that need to go on the aircraft. So if you can save a few hundred dollars a year, that's that much more flying and proficiency you can add to your flight time. Well, that's also a valid reason to do it. To me, one of the main reasons that you should possibly consider doing preventative maintenance is you're really gonna learn about systems on your aircraft if you are a little bit more involved in the work that's being done. So today I am going to start a series that over the next few months will showcase some of the things that an owner or operator is allowed to do that is called preventative maintenance. The plan for today is not to show you any specific preventative maintenance component, but to give you the documents and the regulations that surround preventative maintenance and sort of explain it. So when I do launch off into changing a tire, changing brake linings, or servicing hydraulic fluid, all the things that I hopefully am going to show over the next few months and maybe even years as I go through the entire list of preventative maintenance items, I want you to have this background first of the documentation whether it's the regulations or the FAA's information about those regulations ahead of time. Just as a reminder, what I'm showcasing here is truly for informational purposes only. This video demonstrates the scope of what preventative maintenance may entail rather than providing a step-by-step -step instructional video of how to do preventative maintenance on your specific aircraft. I'll be demonstrating that for the most part on this Cessna 140, but even if you had a Cessna 140, there's a really good chance because of the modifications that have been done to this one, it's not the same. So even on the exact same airframe, things could be different. Working on an aircraft entails quite a bit of potential risk. Do not attempt maintenance without the supervision of a certified AMP who can verify the specifics for your aircraft. I am not teaching how to perform FAA approved preventative maintenance. Rather, I'm illustrating how to perform preventative maintenance using current FAA guidelines, regulations, and recommendations, which are subject to change, meaning this might be outdated by the time that you see it. My goal with this video is to encourage you potentially as an owner or operator of your aircraft to get involved with the maintenance on your aircraft. Not by just jumping straight in, by getting an FAA certified AMP to supervise and show you how you can do some of these very simple items so you can learn more in depth the systems of your aircraft. Always prioritize safety, use common sense, and make sure you're following the current and applicable FAA guidelines and recommendations for your specific aircraft. Don't take unnecessary risk by assuming that what I'm doing is going to work for what really needs to be a very specific tailored process for whatever aircraft you own or are operating. The first thing I wanna do is point out the documents that I'm going to be using during this discussion so that way if you would like, and I highly recommend this, you can follow along as I discuss the components of each of these. The main one that we're gonna be using is Advisory Circular 43-12A, which is the current version of that Advisory Circular. That discusses 14 CFR Part 43, which deals with preventative maintenance to outline the limitations and the requirements for doing preventative maintenance, including logbook entries. 
So the first thing I want to do is actually describe what preventative maintenance is. So we are going to jump straight into 14 CFR 1.1 and discuss the definition of preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance is the replacement of small standard parts in simple preservation operations that don't require complex assemblies. That is the technical definition from the FAA. It's very simple, but there's not a lot of information in part one about preventative maintenance. But how do I know if something is preventative maintenance? I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to guess. The FAA has actually made a list to let us know what preventative maintenance is. That can be found in 14 CFR part 43, Appendix A. Appendix A has several things in it, one of which is items that are preventative maintenance. As you scan down through this list, there's several simple items such as checking hydraulic fluid, changing tires, changing brake linings, even potentially changing fuel hose linings. But then there's also some fairly complicated ones such as troubleshooting the electrical system of a landing light. I will go ahead and tell you up front, there's some of the items on here I honestly don't think a non-rated mechanic should do. But I do want to kind of show you guys some of the more common ones that you as an owner operator would have the ability to do. One of the things that you will learn as you kind of study regulations, advisory circulars, handbooks, things like that, is when the FAA has a regulation that they want to add informational components to, such as clarifying or adding just general information to a law that they have, they will publish an advisory circular for that which they've done for preventative maintenance. That's Advisory Circular 43-12A. In Advisory Circular 43-12A, there is a great statement that points out that just because an item is preventative maintenance on one aircraft, it may not be on another. For example, changing the tire out on a Cessna 140 might be a lot more simple than changing the tire out on a private business jet that is operated under general operation rules, part 91 as we'll see. Let's talk about who can perform preventative maintenance. Per FAR 43.3, the minimum authorization required for performing preventative maintenance is a private pilot certificate issued under part 61, assuming the aircraft is being used for normal operations. Now, technically, there are some exceptions to where a sport pilot certificate can do preventative maintenance, but for the scope of this discussion, and to keep it simple, I am only going to refer to the private pilot because that's probably the more common individual that could be watching this series. So the minimum requirement for doing preventative maintenance is having a private pilot certificate or higher, which means a student pilot, even if they own the aircraft, legally cannot perform preventative maintenance. In addition to requiring a private pilot certificate, you can't work on an aircraft that you don't own or operate. Now, there are some weird exceptions for charter companies that you can read through part 43 if you're interested to see, but again, that's outside of the scope of this video. I'm really making this for the owner who is interested in potentially going to an AMP to do some preventative maintenance. So what about performance standards? Or for example, how do I know that I've done acceptable or good enough maintenance for the scope of this preventative maintenance that we are discussing here? Most of the time, especially on a modern aircraft, you have a well-designed maintenance manual, and that will clearly lay out the step-by-step -step process for doing maintenance. Now on an older aircraft like this Cessna 140, which was flying for a decade before the FAA was even formed, they don't have a standardized maintenance manual. Its operation manual is kind of what functions as its maintenance manual. Because of that, and in addition to the modern day aircraft maintenance manuals, the practices that are outlined in advisory circulars like AC 43-13, which deals with acceptable maintenance practices, should be adhered to strictly when doing preventative maintenance on older aircraft or on aircraft that don't have a clear process delineated in their maintenance manual. In addition to acceptable practices, AC 43-12A clearly states that the owner, if they're doing preventative maintenance, should have the appropriate and required tools. 
This includes the specific tools required by a maintenance manual to do work. Lastly, under this section, the FAA reminds owner and operators right here that are gonna do preventative maintenance. Something that seems very simple may have hidden complexities that you did not anticipate. On top of verifying that you're able to do preventative maintenance and doing acceptable work, you have to make sure that you've legally complied with the correct way to sign off maintenance, in this case, preventative maintenance, in the aircraft's records. There is a very specific four-step process usually listed in part 43, but for you guys, it'll be a three-step process outlined here in Advisory Circular 43-12A. This part discusses the Federal Aviation Regulation 14 CFR. We call it the FARs for short, 43.9. And the first component here is a description or reference data acceptable to the administrator of the work performed. The description itself is simply what you did. Oftentimes though, this can be a complex process requiring many steps in which you can just reference the acceptable data to clarify how the process was done. For example, you might say, removed main wheel tires and replaced in accordance with manufacturer's maintenance manual. That is letting whoever comes along behind you see you followed that process rather than listing the entire steps of how to do that process. Regardless of what it is, if you had to use a acceptable document or acceptable data, you should reference that. A lot of times in my logbook entries, I'll actually reference the Cessna 140 reference manual. Because this aircraft does not have a maintenance manual, this is a document put together by the Cessna 12140 Association that is a wealth of knowledge and information on how to work on this aircraft. The second item that's required, self-explanatory, is the date that the item was performed. The third component is the name of the individual completing the work if it is not the individual that is signing it off. As a owner operator, this is a moot point to you. So line number three under FAR 43.9 is not applicable in our case because you can't supervise someone who's doing preventative maintenance. You can only do it. So in this case, you would be skipping on down to line number four, which is the signature certificate number and the kind of certificate by the person that is approving or returning the aircraft to service. Do not start waxing eloquent here and say, I hereby reconcile with my certificate. I have completed heretofore, yada, yada, yada. All you have to do is put the description of the work performed and then when you sign it off, that is saying that it was done according to FAA standards and that you are returning it to service. That's just your signature your certificate type and number. Now the advisory circular even explains how you should write that. And I see this done wrong so many times in logbooks. And it's interesting to see the people that are signing off preventative maintenance that may have never even looked at this advisory circular. It recommends using things like PP for private pilot, CP for commercial, and ATP for airline transport pilot. In addition to the certificate number that appears on your certificate. Your signature is the approval to return to service. Therefore, there is no approval statement required like there is if you go to look at an annual or a 100 hour inspection. But when it comes down to it, the minimum is the date that the work was performed, you signing it off as the individual performing it with your pilot certificate number as well as your level of certificate and then the description of the work being performed. So during this series, I'm going to release these about every month or so, depending on how quickly I can get some of these items filmed. I mean, I don't want to down my aircraft just perpetually to make videos, but as I'm replacing stuff, as I'm updating stuff, and really I'm pulling from some previous videos to showcase some of these items, I'm going to walk through each of these components that are applicable to my aircraft. Next time, we're going to jump into looking at some simple preventative maintenance on this Cessna 140 and discussing how it might help you as I showcase what that looks like on my particular aircraft. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'm looking forward to this series. Have a great day.